Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we start discussing about the synchronous counters. We're done with the asynchronous. We've seen a lot of different forms of them. Today we start discussing synchronous counters. All right. And you know what synchronous counter is. I believe I've told you in the very beginning. In the general introduction of counters, I think I've said about it, but doesn't matter. I will just tell you again that synchronous, in the asynchronous counter, we, we use the, the output of the previous flip-flop as the clock to the next flip-flop. But over here, in synchronous counter, an external clock pulse is provided simultaneously to all the flip-flop. So, right? The external clock pulse is provided simultaneously to all the flip-flops. All right. Now, what are the, we have some steps in designing the synchronous counters, all right? So I write down the steps here for you, all right? Number one, you do what you have to decide the number of flip-flops and the flip-flop itself that has to be used, all right? So you decide the number of flip-flops, depending, to be used. Depending on what? Depending on the number of bits, all right? That is what you know. Number two is what? You, you should know the excitation table of the flip-flop, all right? The excitation table of the flip-flop. The third is that you draw the state diagram of the counter and the circuit excitation table, all right? The state diagram and the circuit excitation table. Now this word is new for you, but it is just new for a few minutes, all right? After that, you'll know what it is. The fourth step is you obtain the simplified, you obtain the equation using K-maps. And number fifth is you draw, the circuit, you draw the logic diagram. So these are the five steps which I have copied from the book, all right? So these are the five steps according to which we will be designing any synchronous counter. In synchronous counter, the external clock pulse is provided to all the, the, the flip-flops of the counters simultaneously. Now we take an example. Let's say we design a two-bit synchronous up counter, all right, for example. So, so let's say these are the steps, so I just separated them for over here. Okay. All right. Let's say a question is given to design a two-bit synchronous up counter. Design a two-bit synchronous up counter. Now, have a look. So you have two bits. So the number of flip-flops is what? You need two flip-flops, all right? You need two flip-flops. And let's say I am using T flip-flops. So this is the first step, is done. All right, or let's say, let's say you will be saying that I'm using the T flip-flops again and again. So say I'm using the JK flip-flops in this case. Is that fine? JK and T the same, but a little different. All right, now, the second step is what? You need to know the excitation table of the flip-flop. So excitation table, you have the present state, you have the next state, and depending on that, you decide your J and K, the inputs, the present inputs, all right? So the excitation table, we have a previous video on that. If you don't know the excitation table, right now I don't remember it. I'll be copying it from the book. But you need to understand how is it formed. I'm not telling you how is it formed. I'm just copying it right now. To understand how is it, you need to go back and watch the videos on this JK flip-flops. 
All right, so the present input come in, these are the present state and the next state combinations and depending on them, the JK values are 0, 1, don't care, don't care, and a don't care, don't care, 1, 0. So this is the excitation table for the JK flip-flop, all right? Now the state diagram and the circuit excitation table, all right? So the state diagram is, you know what? It's simple, okay? You have a two-bit counter, so we've already drawn the state diagram. This is a zero, zero. The next state would be zero, one. The next would be one, zero. And final would be one, one. You, you do what? You enclose them in a circle, sort of a circle, all right? These represent the states. State one, state two, state three, state four. These are the four states. And you're up counting from 0, 0 to 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then reset to 0, 0. This is the state diagram. Now, this is the third step, all right? The third step starts here. Now, the circuit excitation table, all right? Circuit excitation table. So this is something new for you guys, all right? So what do you have? You have in this, uh, you have the present state, you have the next states and you have the inputs, all right? So let's say you have a you have a two bit counter. This is Q1, Q2 is the present state. Q1 star and Q2 star are the next states. And depending on these, you have the inputs of the flip flops that are J1, K1 and J2. K2. All right. Now these are what? These are the present states. These are the next states. And these you will be deciding. These are the inputs to the flip flops. You will be de deciding with the help of excitation table. So that is why this is called the circuit excitation table. All right. Because over here you have the whole circuit, Q1 and Q2, two input and outputs are involved. Now have a look. For if the present state is 0, 0, 0, 0, the next state for it is 0, 1. Fine. Now 0, 1 becomes your next, your present state. So the next state for it is 1, 0. If your 1, 0 becomes your present state, the next state for it is 1, 1. And if the 1, 1 is your present state, so the next state for it is a 0, 0. Is that fine? All right. Now what do you have? The next step is deciding the inputs J and K with the help of from the excitation table. So first for J and K, 1, all right? So for 0, 0. For 0, 0, uh, we have J is 0, all right? J is 0 and K is X, right? Yes. So let me uh, draw it, make it colorful. Let me make it more colorful, all right? So when Q1 and present state and next state are 0, 0, we have the value of J is 0 and the value of K is X. Don't care. When you have a 0, 1, we have J1 and K is don't care. When you have a 1, 1, so you have J is don't care and K is 1. And now you have 1, 0. No, I, I made a mistake. This is 1, 1. This is the final state. 1, 1 is a don't care 0. All right, and now finally one zero is a don't care one. So this is about the Q1, all right, and the Q1 prime. Now if you have a Q2, so zero one, zero one will give you a one don't care. Fine, one zero will give you a don't care one. Uh, zero one gives you a one don't care. Or I made a mistake again. No, no, zero one, yes, one don't care. One zero, don't care one. Zero one again, so one don't care. And one zero again, so don't care one. This is your circuit excitation table. Now, what do you need obtain using, obtain equations using K maps? So what are these equations for? These are for J1, K1, J2, and K2. Is that clear? So for that, 
uh, let me remove uh, which part of it so I will remove uh, this part of it the whole part of it all right so first let me remove this and we will go stepwise all right okay so what do you have now in this case for j1 first let's say so these are two variables uh, q1 and q2 all right so we have a four cells map so this is the four cell map let's say for the first you have a q1 you have a q2 0 1 0 and 1 so for j1 have a look 0 1 don't care don't care 0 1 don't care don't care so only this is the group which means j1 is equal to q2 fine now have a look for k1 for k1 again we have the same four variable map in this way you have q1 and q2 are the input 0 1 0 1 so k1 is don't care don't care 0 1 don't care don't care 0 and 1 so again this is the group which means k1 is also equal to q2 fine for j2 q1 q2 0 1 0 1 for j2 1 don't care 1 don't care 1 don't care 1 don't care so which means i can group all of them if i take the don't care as a 1 so this is j2 and this is equal to logic 1 fine now for k2 so i don't have a, or i have it fine this is enough space all right so this is 0 1 0 and 1 and these are q1 and q2 for j k, k2 we have don't care 1 don't care 1 so again if i take the don't care as 1 so i can take the value of k2 as a logic 1 all right and now we have this is the fourth step is done we have the required equations and now you you draw the fifth step in which we draw the circuit diagram for it all right so let me draw the fifth step over here this was the fourth step fine and the fifth step comes here the logic diagram so this is a two bit counter which means we have two flip flops this is the first flip flop this is the second flip flop all right this is j a k a or one one it is represented by one one so j one k one q one q one complement j two k two q two q two complement fine and an external clock pulse is provided simultaneously so so this is the difference of the of the uh, synchronous counter from the asynchronous counter this is the external clock pulse all right now j uh, 2 and k2 are both 1 so you provide them a logic 1 all right this is your j2 this is your k2 they are both provided a logic 1 all right and then what do you have for for j1 j1 is equal to q2 all right so j1 is equal to q2 so you take the q2 from here and you give it to j1 and for uh, k1 you have q2 again so j1 and k1 is also equal to q2 so so this is the final circuit diagram so this is the two bit synchronous up counter that we have designed all right so that's all about it that's all about today see you in the next lecture maybe with the three bit counter so till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you goodbye